They're not quite realizing some of the new strategies that have become apparent in Kobolds and Catacombs. And that's just down to practice, right? Yeah, it's just, And he even said himself, he hasn't practiced as much as he would have liked coming into this. But we can now see the classes and the bands, both Warlocks taken away, as has been very apparent throughout the Shock. entire tournament. Uh, so we'll go through the lineups for both these players. Deathsea had a Jade Druid, a Dragon Combo Priest, and a Murloc Paladin. I believe. And then on the side of Mysterious, it was an Agro Druid, a Highlander Priest, and the Tempo Rogue. Uh, you were already saying you don't like Deathsea's lineup yep. as much. Does it work against what Mysterious has brought? Um, it can do. Uh, the Combo Priest is obviously against the Rogue and the Druid, pretty all in on finding a Dust Breaker, especially against the Druid on turn four. And obviously, that's incredibly powerful, but it's also quite predictable, quite linear. It's very easy to play around what the Combo Priest can throw down. So if Mysterious is worth his salt, I think he should be able to maneuver his earlier aggro tools to not play too heavily into the early removal from Death Sea. And Dan, we were talking about yesterday the whole aggro Druid, Jade Druid, uh, which is going to be which we were saying we might actually eventually see it. Today we could see it. We could see the Agrodrid versus Jadrid in this. How do you feel about that matchup? It's not a matchup that I've seen much of recently. Uh, I think it should have improved for the Jade Druid in theory because of Oaken Summons. Mm -hmm. There's obviously still Spreading Plague, which is an incredible anti-aggro tool. Like Your opponent plays Living Mana, you play Spreading Plague, you're in a nice position. However, it's one of those things, isn't it? The Agro Druid can just stomp the Jade Druid by turn four. Yeah, and I think the way that Deathsea's built his Druid might actually be worse against Agro Druid because we haven't seen any Wraths in his deck, which although that seems to be fairly unanimous at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's just that the Spellstone sort of replaced Wraths. Sort of replaced it. I mean, I don't even know if we've seen that because he has to find room for what the Medivh he's got in there, the Innovate yeah. that he's got in there, at least one or very possibly two in there. In he's got Innovate? I missed Innovate that in his, in his oh, wow, Druid. Okay. Yep, very, very interesting build of the Jade Druid. So in some ways, very tech to do with Aggro because Innovate can allow you some faster starts, getting out that Plague a turn earlier. But cards like Medivh are very slow indeed. It looks like we're just having some teething issues getting these players to actually get into their first game at the moment. So unfortunately for you guys, you're going to have to listen to us waffle a little bit more. I mean, but they've got to do that all day anyway. They love it, really. Let's be honest. Uh, what, what I want to ask you both is Death Sea and Mysterious. I mean, after yesterday, who goes home and who does their research a little bit more? Who watches back the broadcast? Who writes down every single card that they've seen from their opponent? Are we likely to see that from Mysterious or Death Sea? I mean, from Mysterious, it's tough to read because we haven't actually talked to him that much since he's been here. He Once again, he doesn't talk. The yes. man doesn't talk. Well, he's just oh, he been, is right now. He's been hidden away with his teammate, Ben, in the corner just practicing. And maybe that is a good indication of the kind of player he is. You know, you said he's not full-time Hearthstone, but when he's committing to it on the time he has, he really absolutely jams it. He was just playing all day. So I think he will have, uh, given that deck list submission was very, very recent, he will have made sure he's at uh, the tip top of his knowledge. All right, well, we're going to dive into game one of the day, then it's Championship Sunday. Let's get at it. Dead Sea versus Mysterious. Makes you chuckle every time. Makes me it laugh does. every time. I mean, it's partly just Death Sea with the peace sign there as well, just with Mysterious or Serious crossing arms. And Death Sea looking like he's going to be serious, but then there's the peace sign. We've got the innkeeper's voice in the background. It's it's great fun. Yeah, the thing that makes me laugh is just the fact that I know that somewhere out there there's an ad on Craigslist from the ESL Prem asking for a random Scotsman to talk <laughs> about <laughs> some, <laughs> some Hearthstone players. Well, you're right. It was Mr. Tavern Man himself. Is that what? Mr. Half Half Stone, Stone Brew. Mr. Half man Stone Brew. Oh, brew yeah, of course. Of Stone I think it must be his brother or something. Hey, cousin. Oh, Daniel cousin? Stonebrew. Yeah. Daniel. But you can't say Daniel in this studio. There's oh, already yeah. seven of them. That's you what we established us. yesterday. It was actually a combination of me and Dan combining our voices to Death become Scottish. This is mysterious. Yeah, that's that's not, bad. not bad, actually. That's, that's pretty bad. good. Yeah. I, I have been practicing. Yeah, we'll pay you <laughs> next time. Excellent. All right, then. Game one uh, is going to be Desi piloting this priest, which, of course, he did start with in his previous series when he won. But uh, Mysterious, on the other hand, is going to be piloting his rogue. Ooh, so uh, I'm surprised to see Desi throwing away the... Is that where you were going with that, yes. Derek? Yeah. Throwing away the Nether Space story. And he yeah. does pick up a Dust Breaker, but that's no good if he doesn't get a second dragon. Yeah, that's exactly right. I was looking at maybe keeping the operative even yeah. in combination yeah. with the Nether Spite, because yeah. I believe there's about a 60% chance to find Dust Breaker. That could not be quite correct. But obviously, the class bonus on Discovers would have made it much more likely to find that Dust Break, which, to be fair, is not as crucial against Rogue as it is against some of the other aggro decks, but it's still your premier tool. Yeah, Historian's great now. You can get Operative, you can get Dust Breaker, you can get Temporus. Temporus. Yep. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Knew you were going there. That is the downside to that, of course. Does it just make you think of Tempura, like nice... 
deep fried Japanese food. It just makes food. me think of my opponent winning a game immediately. Yeah. I have never seen that card played. I played it once. Really? Against... It's, it's a legitimate pick in a fair few matches. Well, I played it once against a Warlock. I've been told against Warlock. Yeah. Temporary yeah, yeah. great pick. Still beat me in, in, oh. in his two turns. <laughs> but for the moment here for Mysterious, pretty respectable curve to get things going. Obviously, the Tar Creeper will be nice now that he... Oh, sorry. The Corridor Creeper will be nice to apply a bit more pressure in the mid game. And it's very invulnerable to a lot of what the Combo Priest is trying to do, <laughs> given that Dragonfire Potion does not make an appearance in the vast majority of lists. Dutsy has such a strange hand because, uh, like, you could say it's a horrible hand. He's never going to be able to deal with Mysterious's board. Hmm. However, if he gets to, what's this, turn seven, eight, nine, if he gets to turn nine, he could Acolyte or Corridor Creeper, Potion, double its health, hit Mysterious in the face with it. Although he's having to play the Acolyte now in order to survive that long. So yeah, I'm going to go back to a pretty terrible hand. I think I can respect that, but it needs very little to become very good, That's I would right. say. If he picks up, uh, obviously, a dragon to activate the dust break, it would be very strong, or even just something like a radiant elemental to make a really big minion and then start smacking away to face. He could just go all in very quickly on betting his opponent doesn't have um, a Valspine Slayer because nothing was kept in the opening hand for Mysterious, and he hasn't been playing that little card. Other thing worth noting is that Deathsea has drawn both Divine Spirits. Uh, yeah, they were both drawn naturally, right? Because I'm now seeing there's a Shadow Visions at the side and I'm just having a little panic attack. But I, I believe he's drawn both Divine Spirits and that's not what you want to do because if you draw both, you can't generate any extra ones from the Shadow Visions and uh, trouble. That's true. I think two will probably be enough in this matchup, however. Yeah. And, he'll, you know, it means he can discover the more important cards off of Divine Fave, or off of the Shadow Vision, sorry, like maybe getting uh, more Potion of Madness, a Circle of Healing when he's got a Cleric on board, things like that or a powered shield is probably the best one. Look at all those awkwardly shaped two threes on Mysterious' side of the board with Deathsea. Absolutely nothing he can do about them. Mysterious is sitting there thinking, please no Dustbreaker, please no Dustbreaker, please no Dustbreaker. But it's fine, even if there was a Dustbreaker. Mysterious seems to just be running away with this one. Yeah, he does, but he could have played around the Dustbreaker a little bit more effectively, I would say, because, uh, you know, obviously it's very manner efficient to just play uh, the Saranite Chain Gangs here on turn four. But the thing is, you're very vulnerable to that, whereas he could have played the Tar Creeper, maybe with the Fireflight in addition to it. This is so awkward. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he's doing the best that he can. He's just putting something on the board. Yeah. That, otherwise, the Rogue is just going to run out of control. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You will get far too far behind. So now a little bit of a prey, I think, from him to say, right, I hope there's no way he can even uh, combat this 2-8 because then potentially I could build something big following it, him. It just sucks that he's as good as throwing away one of his win conditions in order to survive. Yeah, he can still win the tempo game. He has the potential of doing that. There's the uh, Dragon Operative, etc., etc. But he's just used both Twilight Acolytes. So now that trick of taking his opponent's minions and using them against him, that's, that's just a dream. That's just a memory. It is out the window, but wow, uh, in order to okay. make this work, he would probably have to stick a minion on the board anyway, yeah. or, you know, he just needs to use them to stay alive. Yeah. Although it is always a little bit sad that combo is not available to him now. But with the pickup of the dragon, this dust breaker seems absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> He'll want to pick up another dragon next turn, though, yeah. so that he can get the operative. The problem just goes on and on. Really, I mean, what he needed was that Nether Spite Historian right at the start of the game. That's a very good point. Um, but at the same time, even without picking up a dragon, could just play the operative as a body. It's not that bad. Or even just make a 6-6 six -six with this Dustbreaker uh, by Divine Spirit in a firing it. Depending on what comes down here for Mysterious, that could be very strong indeed. And obviously, small spectator issue with Mysterious' cards at the moment. I believe that Corridor Creeper will be a fair bit cheaper at the moment. Uh, and depending on what he could have picked up here, he's obviously looking, I suppose, for the premier card of Valspine Slayer at some point. Or maybe a Bone Mare in the next turn or two to start really pushing some damage. Yeah, I feel like a lot of Mysterious' deck is just absolutely fine in this sort of position. Even Elven Minstrel would be... Oh, where'd that Swashburglar come from? Okay. Even Elven Minstrel would be fine. Uh, he just needs to keep getting more stuff and out-tempo Deathsea, yeah. as that's what this matchup is coming down to. This is some pretty, pretty good tempo. Yeah, it is indeed, because the removal available to Deathsea is very, very low indeed. And this is the problem that Dragon Priest exactly runs into. A lot of its cards are purely good if you can get a good combo with them. Here, Circle of Feeling is completely useless. Divine Spirit and Inner Fire are 
pretty bad. Uh, there's just nothing really he can do to fight back aggressively enough against this board. He's just going to have to rely on putting forward his own board of minions and hope that that can see him through. <laughs> yeah, and with the spectator bug, we will just jump into the point of view of Desi whilst we sort that one out for Mysterious as well to make sure that we get his actual mana curve and can see what cards he's holding. It's a shame when it does that. So now it's all about this bone mare, really. Like, can Death Day actually stick something to the board to buff it up, or is it just not worth taking? I think it's way too optimistic. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not run in the deck, so Mysterious probably won't be, uh, maybe won't be clearing off in order to play around bone mare, but he will be clearing off to play around Vol uh, to play around Divine Spirit, to play around Inner Fire, Power Word Shield, Talon Priest, all these really powerful buff cards that rely on having something on board. Now, this is the closest to being in Death Sea's shoes that will ever be. <laughs> My is feet it? are probably way too big. I've tried them on. My feet are too small. Yeah. Mine are just right. <laughs> All right, Goldilocks. All right, Mummy Bear. Oh, oh yeah. I kind of forgot how this <laughs> before he goes, actually, there, didn't I? Oh, is it go. Baby Bear that's just right? No, Baby Bear's too small. Ah. You are Baby Bear in this scenario. Great. I'm always Baby Bear. And, well, for Death Sea here, it does... Uh, actually end up working out because the dagger there was just one point short of enough damage to clear this off. So we could see a bone mare being thrown down now just to solidify this board. And I suppose it's kind of the best he's got. Yeah. But it's still not that great. There's obviously the present threat of Valspine, which just became much more likely with Elven Minstrel coming down. And then outside of that, it's just all in on sticking a minion on board because, as you said, that trick mm. of Twilight Acolyte into Potion of Madness, buff it up, kill your opponent, is gone. And it's a nice trick, too. Like, imagine using it against this Tar Creeper. That's great. That could be a 20-20, smacking Mysterious in the face. Wouldn't be enough to kill him, but then maybe there's a Powered Shield somewhere. There's a, another Cabal Talon Priest somewhere that could buff it up even more. Dessie has now picked up the North Shed Cleric, so there's maybe an additional plan. He's got the Circle of Healing if he can draw Wild Pyromancer, which this deck often runs as a one of. Maybe he could draw the rest of his deck. Question is, is there actually anything in his deck that's good enough to get him out of this? What he needs, I think, one of the only ways to win this game is Double Radiant Elemental and Lyra. Yeah, well, I don't actually know if he's that far behind, because actually on this turn, what he could have done is go North Shire Cleric with Circle of Healing. With a hero power to heal his enemy, opponent's minions, he could have drawn three cards and hoped to draw Duskbreaker. But I guess actually after okay. he's healed them up, Duskbreaker becomes a lot less efficient. But at some point soon, he's got the big sweep with North Shire Cleric. I do like not using it this turn as he's done, because I think yeah, he can I, get more mm. cards later on. And then he hopes to get Duskbreaker, maybe a double in combination with a Nether Spite Historian, and then sweep the board. It's nice to see the Bone Mare paying off though. Yes, yep. Uh, it was a risky pick mm -hmm. because Valspine shuts it down, Backstab shuts it down, any, like a deckhand shuts it down. One point of damage was all that was needed, uh, but it did work out in the end for him very nicely. I just think Mysterious is in such an advantageous position at this point that he knows what he's playing around because he already knows the deck that Death is playing, of course. And he's got the tools to remove these big things. As long as he keeps the board clear, he's seen uh, two of the minions that can, of course, affect his game plan, that can steal his own minions. Potion of Madness, as long as he makes sure there's nothing that has two help, uh, two attack on his side of the board, then he's going to feel relatively comfortable. Yeah, and even then, that trick of getting a one-turn combo, it has to be with a relatively high health minion then. Yeah. And there's no minions that have two or less attack and well, high health in the deck. You pretty well, yeah, it, it, it just doesn't work without the Twilight Acolyte. Yeah. Obviously, that's the extra tool, which is now gone entirely to, to win, but like, you need that the Radiant Elemental as well, and then all of the other little bits and pieces. Like Power and Shield becomes free, you can play two of them, you can play Divine Spirits, and a Fire, etc. But now, that's not a Wild Pyromancer, and I think that's got to be what Dusty was hoping for here. Yeah, it was indeed. And these are the situations of why we see certain or people teching in Stormwind Knight into their decks, because actually sticking a minion on board is oftentimes a fairly tall order. We right. saw it with Silence Priest, we see it with this d priest as well. When a lot of the tempo decks like Rogue or Paladin really want to clear off your board every turn, often they can just creep over the finish line and get it done. Stormwind Knight is a 4-mana 2-5 with charge for anyone that uh, <laughs> hasn't been paying attention to it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting that he went subtle, for the... You're trying to be subtle? Subtle. Subtle, okay. Right, I was going to say, don't try and do I'm that. I'm never going <laughs> to try and be subtle. Um, God, no. Interesting that he went for the Circle of Healing to draw rather than his hero power, obviously hoping for something more significant from the draw with his mana use. 
Uh, but instead, he does just use his hero power anyway. I guess it allows him to heal up to 17 rather than 15 if he's worried about damage. And of course, there is the damage from Leroy Jenkins, which is going to clear this game up. And Mysterious is going to take a 1-0 lead. Hello, Leroy. Yeah, oh, wrong player. This <laughs> has been in the books for a while for Mysterious. His start was perfectly respectable, and Deathsea did eventually manage to activate the Dustbreaker. But I think I can still, after that game, agree with you that it should have been a keep of Northshire Cleric to try and find uh, the extra Dustbreaker to sweep that board. And even if not, just a powerful turn of uh, coin operative into operative maybe would have been enough yeah. to start wrestling it back. I think that that's where it went wrong from Deathsy was the Mulligan. I think that his, uh, his, Historian is one of the few cards you can play in that deck on turn two. It's a 1-3 body that shapes up okay against yeah, those pirates bad. that have charged. Um, and I, and I, I do think that's just where Deathsy went wrong though. Uh, probably a good reminder as well to remind all viewers that this is a conquest format. It is best of five, and as you can see, all the decks and classes there. So both players bring four, they ban one away, and then you have to win with all three of the decks that do remain rather so than last hero standing. So Desi still has to win all three games with his Druid, Paladin, and Priest, but Mysterious now no longer has to play with his Rogue. So he has his Priest and Druid left, uh, which is the Highlander Priest and the Aggro Druid. Now, I don't think that Game one really changes the matchup at all, even if Deathsea had brought a Highlander Priest, because we've seen Rogue beating Highlander Priest anyway. We're going to see this matchup that you asked me about a little bit earlier, though, Dan. It is going to be Agro Druid versus J Druid. And a very respectable start to get things going for Mysterious. Mole into Mark uh, is the name of my new band. Or, or just my <laughs> forearm. <laughs> Mole into Mark. Yeah, poor oh boy. Uh, and it's also a fantastic start for, for Agro Druid. Yep, whereas Deathsea on the Jade Druid, Branching Path is another tool that can gain him some armor. Um, Oaken Summons, I described earlier as being one of the better cards in the matchup yeah, yeah, now, yeah. gains armor and summons you potentially a 3 6 with Torn. I mean, it's better, but I just, against this, it's not going to get the job done. He needs to hit Spreading Plague fairly soon, uh, or he needs to ramp up to Malfurion in a very timely fashion indeed. And he's actually got a pretty good way of doing that. Jay Blossom obviously games in a manner. Oaken Summons hopefully buys him enough time to get up there. And Branching Paths as well, to an extent, if it can gain him enough armor, he might be able to creep over that taunty finish line. I remember it was this J Druid that let Deathsea down in his opening game uh, yesterday against Hello Leroy as well, where he lost 3-0 and used his J Druid every single time. Okay, so Deathsea now has Jade Blossom into Nourish. It's slow. This is not good tempo whatsoever against what Mysterious has got. But three into five, he can then hero power next turn, and then he's going to have a plethora of options the turn yeah. after that. Can he hold on long enough? That I, is the question. I think that's definitely the play to go for Nourish next turn because, you know, as you said, it's a low tempo play. If he was playing Wraths, it would very possibly become a lot better because if you can utilize that two mana that you have Nourish left over after okay. ramping with Nourish, then you can very often just stay ahead. But going up to eight mana and then going Branching Path, Oaken Summons, or just Malfurion, that's the winning line. And obviously just praying that he draws Plague. Wow. Oh, that's not bad either. It's not bad at all. But then he has to ask himself, is it better to play the Wild Growth or is it better to hero power down the Firefly? Does he need to be playing around cards like Mark of the Lotus, Power yeah. of the Wild? Um, very possibly. If he had Plague in hand, I think he'd much heavily consider leaving it up. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, but at the moment, the difference between eight and nine mana is actually not all too significant. You can go Malfurion hero power instead. Uh, that, that's somewhat significant. Which ha yeah, that is actually quite a good point. That does That is a fairly large breaking point, but hero powering on this turn to kill off a 1-1 one, one is a comparable, I would say. Yep, I agree with this, with this line entirely. And now Mysterious is going to do the best he can to punish Deathsea for playing so slowly. He does have double power of the wild. That's that's a lot of buffs, and he's going for it. Yeah, this is definitely the way to go about it. It's it means Spreading Plague is just by his turn. It does not win him the game now, which is what you need Spreading Plague to do. Pushes a ridiculous amount of damage. He's got strong follow-up with Cobalt Scalebane, because uh, he's not even that afraid of UI as it stands. Because if Scalebane comes down and then UI is the answer, his opponent is just dead. Mark of the Asharaj in hand as well for Mysterious, just yeah. to buff up that mole again. It's worth mentioning, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen. Do you think Deathsea so ever considers the Scarab sit? The, sorry, the Spider sit. The Spiders? Well, how much health? He, he would survive just about, thanks to the armor that he'd get from the Hero Power and from the Death Knight. 
I like your optimism. <laughs> uh, Obviously, Savage Raw just kills him dead. Yeah, here on planet Earth, I think it's probably <laughs> not worth going for that because uh, this buys you an extra turn. It gives you a chance to draw UI, to draw Spreading Plague, and you know, you're not winning with these cards no matter what. Mm -hmm. And now for Deathsea, it's, well, do I get Spreading Plague and delay this horrible massacre? That's a good draw, though. He can play that with the Oaken Summons. Uh, yep, keeps him alive on board. As long as he gets a taunt, not Fandral. Uh, I think it would... Oh, no, he would have to hero up uh, to stay alive on board if he didn't get the Fandral. Yeah, or, the taunt. Yeah. The 3-6, yeah. So starting off with the Oaken Summons, because if he does get okay. Fandral, right. he would have to go with something else. Yep, this is a very nice way of ordering things. And he's put himself in a spot to draw an out, maybe. If he can kill off all his opponent's stuff <laughs> and get maybe a UI or a spreading plague, then it can start to pull back because he has ramped incredibly strongly. Living Mana picked up from Mysterious. Death Sea will, there's, there's no question about it. Death Sea will need Spreading Plague to prevent that Living Mana from killing him if the Living Mana even needs to come down. That's why Branching Pass is quite interesting though because it's four mana, draw two cards. Spreading Plague is a six mana card. They work well together. Yep. Oh, man. For, for Mysterious here, he's just got the absolute perfect hand to counter Jade Druid because you don't even necessarily want to go that wide on the board. You just want to have few big things. And that's actually kind of difficult to do now as aggro Druid because you don't have Innovate and Bitter Tide Hydra to get out a very big minion early on. So you're instead relying on these super buffs and Scale Bane instead to get the job done. Ooh. And that is the UI now picked up Not good enough, with 614 damage available on board. Uh, it keeps him alive, I think, doesn't it? By one. Yeah. <laughs> That's assuming that Mysterious has no way of buffing anything. Obviously, he's played two Power of the Wilds already. We haven't seen Mark of the Lotus. We've seen Mark of Yashiraj. We haven't seen Savage Roar. It's really risky, but does Deathsea actually have anything better? Well, if, he, if he's alive on board, he goes with this play. He should do, because then that gives him outs to win the game. Because. Mm -hmm. The power of Ultimate Infestation is not even necessarily the, t the swing on the turn you play it because it's a Firelands portal that heals you a little bit. It's the turn after. It's because every time after you play it, you can and survive. How is he alive on board? Is he uh, 16 health. He kills the 10 4. There's 14 damage, 15 damage, including the hero power. Okay. Um, I believe he runs an Arcane Tyrant as well, doesn't he? Oh, no, uh, yes, yeah, he does. That's a good point. Very good point. Doesn't quite find it, it though. That's a shame. But get some good options. Uh, some, a turn like Branching Paths, Swipe, Spellstone, Jade Idol is a huge tempo swing in his favor. He's actually, he's putting forward a very respectable turn next turn. So Mysterious needs to make sure that his board is still a huge threat on the following turn. Deathsea heavily rewarded for this ultimate infestation as Mysterious can't quite finish the job. Wait, oh no, I was about to ask a very stupid question, uh, which, I could answer just by looking at the board. Patches has oh. already come yeah. out, yeah. indeed. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's was my good. general thought process when I was like, wait, how's he alive? <laughs> oh, no, wait, no, never mind. Ah, okay, okay. It's unbelievably close though. Getting your opponent down to one health against a druid is not necessarily the most important thing because they're very likely going to gain some form of armor or put down a taunt in the way. So it is all about taking value trades when necessary and giving yourself the strongest board possible. But what's incredible here, if that Scarab is trading in, yes, yeah, so if Swipe plus the Spellstone will clear the board, then Deathsea will still have the mana to play Branching Paths, allowing him to gain 12 armor. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think about how he can best order this, because if he gains double armor off Branching Paths, these Spellstones will be fully upgraded, or even once, yeah. the well, one he, on the left. He doesn't even need the upgrade. swipe anymore. Now he's drawn the second one. He can just play Branching Paths once. They'll both be fully upgraded, because that's how it works. It does the armor in two separate steps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he makes the trade, puts the Spellstones into the other two minions, and he's good to go. He can still wow. use his hero power to armor up after that. This is a great position now for Dirty to be in. And he's played this He's played this very well, actually, I would say. Taking the risk of going mm. for Nourish early on, ramping up even with the Wild Growth turned out to be a great play just to get him that extra hero power with the Malfurion on that all-important turn. How frustrating is that for Mysterious, though, being one-off? Uh, like, it, he'll be thinking, is there any point I could have added one extra damage throughout the game? I'm trying to think if he traded into a Jade Golem at the start of the game uh, in order to take a value trade, maybe he could have been slightly more aggressive. It's very, very difficult. This, and this is why Wrath has been replaced 
by the Spellstone in these yeah. decks. Just look at how strong this, this card tempo is. Swing is ridiculous. When you factor in cards like Oaken Summons, like Branching Paths, like the Malfurion Hero Power, you're always fully upgrading the Spellstone very easily, and that's why the card is just insane. Still very strong play for Mysterious, though. Obviously, Living Mana is pretty much the premier card you can throw down at points like this. And then, obviously, a pickup a pick of Mark of the Lotus or Savage Roar mm -hmm. uh, might be able to just deliver him a surprise lethal. Uh, and with no way to fully clear the board here for Death Sea. Time to fish for Spreading Plague. Yep, fish for Spreading Plague and for Swipe. Chances are high as well of getting... Oh, he can't. He can't play both swipes though. If he oh, draws, if he draws yep. it, he's yeah, one yeah. mana short. Okay. If he's true innovate and swipe, then but he's only running one innovate, right? So it's it's trying to find play here, is what he's all in doing. He oh, could go Jack for the wild growth win. first of all. Uh, it's interesting to think if that's if you have higher chances of having an out. If you have one draw for three cards or two draws for two cards, it's probably slightly better this way. Arcane Tyrant is not what he's looking for. Does he just need to go all out on finding Spreading yeah, Plague? That feels to. pretty risky. I think he, he has could to. armor up, surely. Yeah, is he in that three. bad of a spot? If you armor up, oh, okay, at this point. okay. You're right. We haven't seen a Mark of the Lotus yet. That's the only downside to that. But it's only 14 damage yeah, on the board. He's got 18 health. Armoring up would put him on 24. He can hear a power as well. That's 27. You're right. I think armoring up is fine. You've you've won me over, and you've won Deathly over too. It's just, obviously, there's such a high upside if he draws the Plague, but this feels like a win situation anyway, because now there has to be trades from Mysterious. Yeah. That's the main breaking point, which is why I love this play from Death Sea. No Mark of the Lotus. Even, no Savage Raw. And Can even, play it? even if there was a Mark of the Lotus, that would only be 21 damage to the 24 health that yep. Death Sea had, so he'd still be safe. It would have to be two Mark of the Lotuses. Lotai? Mark of the Lotai? Lotopods. <laughs> it would have to be two Lotopods in order to actually uh, kill off Deathsea that turn. Lotingist. <laughs> Someone tweeted me earlier saying, Winningist is actually a word, but it's a very informal one. I was like, all right. <laughs> right. We're a very informal <laughs> cast. <laughs> Sorry if I offended your grandmother. <laughs> we say in our, in our blazers and your bow tie. And... It is a flashy bow tie, though. It is very flashy. Nice. So Mysterious, unfortunately, looks like he has fallen apart in this game. Deathsea just was... Able to turn the corner on essentially one health at one point if Mysterious had pushed all the damage to Absolutely base. Absolutely mental. I'm trying to think what could have been done by Mysterious. Maybe we could have buffed a different minion with the mark of Yasharaj and not drawn a card, which could have allowed him to deliver a little bit more damage through the taunts. But of course, with Swipe, with the hero power, there is more than enough damage for wow. Desi to tie the series up one to one and getting a win with his Jade Druid, which he was unable to do in his first series against Hello Leroy. So he'll be happy to get that one out of the way and end the argument. I say argument, we didn't really argue, <laughs> of Jade Druid versus Aggro that Druid. It is Jade Druid that wins today. That was a really great game to watch. And I'm going to go all in and say, you know what, it was because of the Oaken Summons. Like I said earlier, Oaken Summons was a big card that makes a difference in the matchup. I'm just kidding. It was close. Mysterious was one damage off lethal. It, it doesn't get closer than that. I thought you were going to do the old, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to say, I'm going to watch that game back later and, <laughs> and really analyze it. And I'll be like, no, no. The classic. The classic Hearthstone caster. Yeah. Uh, but that was actually a game uh, that was really for the ages, I think. Uh, Mysterious will definitely be looking back at it. Uh, certainly, if I'm not, he that'll will be, be. They'll be talking about that game for years. But for years to come throughout Premiership history, the Agro Druid versus J Druid. No? If there's not a reference to that game at Worlds, I'm not going to be very happy. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, though, for Deathsea, because while he has got a win with his Druid, which is obviously nice uh, against the fairly aggressive lineup from Mysterious with the Rogue and the Druid, it now means that the Priest is up for uh, for Mysterious, and there's no real counter to it for Deathsea. Do you think the Combo Priest is good enough against Kazakas Priest to get a win? <sighs> it's, it's not one of the better matchups. Oh, really right, <laughs> Well, it's going to be the Combo Priest up against the Aggro Druid here. And I so prefer this one, but Deathly, you have right. to get your Historian. You have to get your Dustbreakers. Yeah. Come on, man. That's right. It is all in on getting either Dustbreakers. Oh, actually, okay. It's Dustbreakers, uh, Wild Pyromancer combos, mm -hmm. or Radiant Power Shield. Is Radiant that, Shield is good, too. This is kind of the strongest, one of the strongest turn twos it's possible to do in Hearthstone. There are some pretty strong turn twos available. This is just a straight up two mana two five though. Yeah. That's, that's mental against an aggro deck. There's just nothing 
it would have to be a superb buff to beat that. And because of that, I can respect this keep from yeah. Deathsea. And with the pickup of Shadow Vision, this hand is actually looking very strong. This is just going to be a turn, turn four win or something, isn't it? Turn three, even the Potion of Madness is fantastic Wait, as well. Doesn't even need to be a win. If he can just find Divine Spirit, make a 210, just trade, 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 trade. <laughs> And although that might not be quite quick enough because it's only one minion against a whole bunch of minions that the aggro druid is throwing down, the Potion of Madness does help to speed up those answers very drastically. Yeah, Potion of Madness is really good here. It's not as valuable in this matchup as it is against the Rogue in terms of actually winning the game with it. All Deathsy needs to do is survive. This is one of those that he really will win in a, in a tempo-y way. So, uh, yeah, yeah Deathsy, yeah, you just have to go all in. Having said that, though, Mysterious has kind of drawn the perfect starting hand mm. for an aggro druid. Four minions buffed on turn two. That's true. I said that's one of the most disgusting turn twos you can have in Hearthstone. This is far better. Well, this is why I was Mysterious. debating it. Like, there's there's yeah. some pretty disgusting stuff. Even just involving, like, Grime Scale Chums and, and Murloc Tidecore, yeah, they, sure. can, they can lead to some disgusting yeah. turns as well. I think this works out quite well for Deathsea, though, because even if, yes, okay, he can't answer everything that's going to be on the board for Mysterious, it may delay Mysterious and may force Mysterious to start trading into things, which gives Deathsea more time to draw into his Duskbreakers that will eventually be able to give him the board presence to win this game. Found the Historian. Yep, Found speaking the historian. of Duskbreakers, there is the Historian. So he needs to get a little bit lucky to get that Duskbreaker. But even if he doesn't, there's some pretty good consolation prizes as well. And again, the chances are high. Like, you, did you say 66%? I that? think it's about 60% is what I heard. Don't, maybe don't quote me on that. Don't quote you on that. All right. According to Jarek, he heard that it's 60%. 60 percent <laughs> 60 Dust break. Yeah. You're going to tweet that later, Dan. I'm going to get him to sign it. I learned, it I learned from Jarek Brown oh. that... <laughs> yeah, you're right, mate. Very funny. You're both very funny boys. All right, well... But this is a fantastic term for death. Yeah. So you can try and get the... Uh, obviously trying to hit the Dustbreaker, but even if he doesn't, it's not as crucial because of that Potion yep. of Madness. He can just get any fairly cheap dragon and he's in a decent spot. No, what are you doing, Deathsea? What are you doing? 60%. <laughs> Another option, though, is fantastic. A 5-6 yeah. body yeah, on the board exactly. and is going to get you a card from your opponent. Yep. Uh, that could be, what, a swipe? Do we see him swipe some Mysterious deck? I uh, don't think so. No? Yeah, I think that's not often run. It, it's fine. Deathsea still curves into Twilight Drake and then gets an operative down and possibly the other operative after that. He's still doing okay, unless he feels as though he's going to have to play Shadow Visions this turn, maybe pull out that second Potion of Madness. That being said, Potion of Madness doesn't do all that much here. Yeah, I think it's just going to be Twilight Drake on this turn, because even if a buff comes down, your minions are still just higher statted, yep. because this is all one drops and two drops from Mysterious, which cannot stand up to the might of four and, four and five drops. Uh, and for Deathsea, I suppose there's some respectable cards he can get pulled what from his opponent's, opponent's deck. What is Elune's will? I don't know. That's the real question. And we've seen Desi in the previous game play Twilight Acolyte quite a lot on curve just to try and combat a board, but I think the Drake just makes far more sense here. Yeah. But he was considering it for quite a while. Well, Do you a three mana two four or a, a four five, take your pick. You consider it because <laughs> if you can get that potion of madness, then you can trade in the history and you get to deal with two out of these three minions. It's not bad. I do prefer the Drake. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why this is a discussion. You save it until you can actually steal some attack from an opposing minion. It's a discussion because he took so long on that. Oh, you're talking, yeah. about, oh, you're talking about the accolades. Sorry, I was talking yeah, about the yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And so for Desi, he can just follow up with fairly strong plays onto the board. He's not under so much pressure. Uh, Savage was lethal. Can't afford to. That's the problem. Savage War is so often lethal, though. I and it's a pure top deck because like, he knows, obviously, that is a flame elemental in Mysterious's hand. Yeah, I hope he does. True. So you can reduce the... Well, Savage Roar is lethal if you don't heal up, right? Um, so you could reduce the power from Mysterious by using the Twilight Acolyte and healing up if you really wanted to. If you're that scared. If you really want wanted to, yeah, but that, that feels so awful. He is, he is going to uh, play Shadow Visions, though, so healing up is on the cards. Cleric Circle heal up looks it's good, actually. Yeah, this is very strong. I Savage Roar, and Savage Roar was exactly lethal, to be precise, with the hero power as well. So healing up even by one is enough. Obviously, he's going to be healing by two. Yeah, I still... I suppose this is a decent play because it gets threats onto the board, draws you cards, and keeps you out of Savage Roar lethal range. 
but I do question whether this will be a, a strong of enough fight back onto the board. Okay. Because this seems fairly all in on still finding Dustbreaker. Where are you, Dustbreaker? <laughs> if he'd just developed the Draconid Operative, then he would have had a much stronger Be board presence. Um, whereas with this line of play, he needs to find some way of fighting back against this board, which Operative would have allowed him. Oh. And so now he's dead to not even just Savage Raw. It would be, what, one off? Uh, if he doesn't heal. Yep. So it would have to be some extra kind of effect from Mysterious coming down, even with or without a heal. Uh, but it's scary, because he just can't fight back against this board. You could use both Acolytes. I hate it, but you could do that. And Dan Gaskin back with the Acolyte pipe. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> I mean, what else are you going to do at this yeah. point? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're reducing your, you're taking two damage off your opponent's board. Well, you you're just giving yourself three fours. Well, it's not actually lethal yet, so there's no, there's no need to be particularly hasty on the acolyte. I like drawing first. I, I don't know if I do. Uh, I think you want to make the strongest. Pl I mean, so like, again, if you're doing this, you need to draw Dustbreaker yeah. because if not, you need to play the strongest turn onto the board that you can, or you're just going to be falling behind. And double acolyte was a much stronger play onto the board. This is the play I was looking at. So like one three drop plus a heal. I know it feels a little bit safe, but uh, ultimately Deathsea now has pretty much as well on static board as his opponent does. So next turn, in theory, he should be able to deal with most of this. Yeah, but I question whether the heal to face will end up paying um, dividends, because if he played... Mark of the Lotus, Power of the Wild, that's what the heal to the face just saved him from. Yes, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying it's maybe worth taking the risk that your opponent will find that, because if they find it here and you survive, so what? You can't fight back in the, onto the board in a strong enough manner to win the game. Uh, how many of the of the buff cards have we seen is the question, I guess. We've definitely seen one early. I think we saw one Mark of the Lotus already. So he still had two Power of the Wilds and one Mark of the Lotus left. I think, well, obviously... second Mark of the Lotus. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. That That's the one Mark of the Lotus that's, he had left. That's the second one. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the one he had left. Yeah. The other two were Power of the Wilds, because he played one Mark of the Lotus in the early turns. So he had a... There, there were three draws in his deck that that face heal saved him from. Obviously, it's results-oriented now to mm. say that was correct. I don't necessarily think that was the right line, but it, it, it worked out. I just think Desi is playing too safe. He's playing not to lose. Uh, whereas, so what? Yes, he can draw the buffs, but he could also just draw minions. And if there are minions being played onto the board, you have to, you what? know, you have to have Is enough stuff on board to fight back. Okay, important question. How does Desi survive at this point? Because I'm fairly certain he just dies. Uh, I don't think that he can. Looking at stuff he can get off operative, is nothing, so it's oh, just man. Dustbreaker he has to find yep. it exactly. And even then, he dies It's no good because they yeah. are Ooh. <laughs> I guess to draw two cards, that's... Yeah, maybe he can make some um, Not got time for pyromancer that. stuff happen. If he had time, maybe he could make this work. But even then, he needs to heal up, which he cannot do. So I think this is over. And obviously, oh, look, there's Dustbreaker. <laughs> Desi was very, un it was fairly unfortunate to not find a Dustbreaker anywhere in the top half of his deck. But I think he could have made steps to fight back on the board with just his minions, where he was a little bit too focused on drawing cards. Because look, he ended up the game with, what, nine cards in hand? But he's still dead. It doesn't make any difference. Why did that cleric have zero attack at the end? <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> that make weird. any sense whatsoever. I, I feel like <laughs> players do that far too often, though, where they're trying to work out what's the best option, how they're going to survive. And then it ropes, and they go, oh, oh yeah. panic. I, I'm going to do something. Yeah. If you, you just need to take a look at the board and say, all right, uh, the likelihood of me surviving here is very slim. What's my best option? Right, let's just start drawing cards. Let's do it early so then I have the time to use those cards yeah. in the best manner. Uh, but Mysterious is going to take a 2-1 lead now, and Deathsea's still not able to find a win today with his Priest. Of course, he was able to get it game one uh, in his second series yesterday. I wonder if this is going to be the Priest that lets him down. It was one of the... You, you said there is a deck he doesn't like playing. Maybe this is the deck that he doesn't like playing. Yeah, very possibly. It's one I, of the more difficult decks. Yeah, I kind of, I don't expect that though, because if you don't like this deck, just bring Gazaka's Priest, because it's obviously an incredibly powerful deck. So you have to have a fair amount of faith in the combo Priest in order to bring it over the obviously very powerful Razakas Priest. All right, come on, Dusty. <laughs> you can find, a, you don't need Dustbreaker this game, but you can yeah, find Dustbreaker this game. <laughs> so you've played, a, you guys have played a lot more of this deck than me against uh, Kazakas Priest, what are the real most important cards you're looking for? 
So I've, I've not played this deck against good players. <laughs> Let's make that entirely clear. I played this deck on ladder, not against players like Mysterious, who, who, who's bringing Razakis Priest to a tournament and knows how to play, or he should know how to play around Combo Priest. One of the win conditions is take your opponent's Raza, hit him in the face with it. But there aren't actually many other big minions that you can do that with. I guess Tar Creeper. No, actually, you can't actually Potion of Madness Tar Creeper unless you're silencing it, because Twilight Acolyte does not work on that yeah. card, which is very weird. So I think for me, what it will come down to very often is just trying to stick a minion yeah. for a turn. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. in the later sure. stages of the game, you have all the time in the world as the combo priest to draw as many of the cards as you possibly can from your deck, which for Deathsea very possibly will happen. We know he's running double circle of healing, so it's just going to come down to, in the mid to late I stages of the game, one turn of sticking a Twilight Drake or a Draconid Operative and then hoping to win the game from there. It's one of those matchups where the Razakis Priest can actually end up sort of using up all of their resources just to clear everything Deathsea's got bit by bit, you know. Operative comes out, another Operative comes out, we've got to death this one, now we've got a Psychic Scream. And the Razakis Priest can end up with very few resources, and that's when the Combo Priest can play Lyra and actually have that stick, and that is one win condition. And Desi throws out the Wild Pyromancer here over the Nether Spite Historian. What do you think his thinking is for that line? I like play? this because you were asking what are the ways you win this game. You can just play it as a tempo deck. You said it yesterday. It works as a tempo-based deck. If you can just get minions on board and beat down your opponent like you would with a tempo rogue, for example, you can just win the game with a surprise combo at some point as well. Put minions on the board. It can work out very well. I have to be honest. I don't like it at all. I think Pyromancer with Northshire Cleric is such an important yeah. facet of this deck. And there's only one Pyromancer. That's it now. His Cleric combo is gone. Well, it... It's interesting because obviously to me, it's a play that screams playing around Acolyte of Pain because you want to be able to kill that off as quickly as possible once it's played. Uh, but the thing is, a lot of things have to happen for that I to be the case. Wonder. Acolyte of Pain has to be drawn, which I don't think you'd keep in the mulligan. Uh, it's kind of difficult to abuse the draw effect on Acolyte of Pain on such an early turn. And so I think just because you can get yourself an extra Draconid Operative, something like that from Nether Spite Historian, that very possibly should have come down first. But at the same time, if you play the uh, Wild Pyromancer on turn two to combat the Acolyte of Pain, you're not really wanting to do anything else on turn three other than the Nether Spike. I think Historian's too slow, though. I think if you give your opportunity, the opponent to the, the Highlander Priest to get ahead on board, then you're going to very, you're really going to struggle keeping That's anything on the board. And that is why I am okay with the player playing the Pyromancer. And if you are waiting the whole game to try and find that Cleric to combine with Circle of Healing as well, again, you're giving the opportunity to your opponent to get onto the board. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, though, at the point where you're playing the Cleric combo later on, you probably don't care about your opponent being on the board, because that's where you get the OTK in. But you need something to stick, though. Something. That's, that's well, the no, point. You, you don't if you're playing Twilight Acolyte OTK. Acolyte Potion, etc., etc. The yeah. problem is Kazakus, though. Like, Kazakus is a card that is very difficult for I this think deck if, to deal with. If you're going to play the draw game against the Highlander Priest, you're going to lose. That's my concern. Do you reckon? Yes. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, your, the, your yeah, main draw yeah, yeah. mechanic is the North Shear Cleric yeah. plus Wild Pyromancer. So That's giving you weight, right? certainly has more draw, yeah. You can get some pretty crazy stuff to occur, but it's, I agree in general. The thing is, it's a different win condition. Like, the Razakis Priest needs to draw exactly the Raza, exactly Anduin to win. With Desi, there are several copies of all of his different janky win conditions that he can throw together. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a different race entirely. Speaking of draw, though, I don't believe it was presented to Mysterious at all on that Kazakus potion, which is obviously what he's looking for as the premier option. But against this particular deck, just having more removal, something like a Polymorph to take out a Twilight Drake, can be very strong because the amount of cards you have to actually clear off your opponent's individual strong minions is incredibly low. So, for example, if it was a Polymorph here, I think he would be fairly happy, actually, just to attack in and throw it down. Maybe if he got resummon, uh, he'd be pretty happy with that as well. But Freeze as his other one is very weak. I think it's good, though. I think Freeze is good at this point, mainly because you going into a turn five against this combo priest, you, you've got to be scared. There's a 4-7 on the board. That could be a 28-28 at some point. You're on 29 health. Like, you need to be worried about that. <laughs> okay, all right. Good, good play. Yeah. Polymorph one, freeze one. Okay. I think it's. I think, think taking the four seven off the board is good. Like yeah, sure. The polymorph part, the freeze part, just seemed a little. Well, bit. yeah. Like <laughs> obviously that's a little bit janky. 
He was just given very, very weak options. Yeah, but I agree, getting rid of the 4 7 was vital, yeah. Because for all he knows, Dassey's just got lethal in his hand if the 4 7 sticks. It's interesting. I, don't, I, think, I think vital is kind of strong because the cards you'd be keeping in this matchup, I don't actually imagine you'd keep the Divine Spiral in a fire, even though they're very strong because you want to be finding them off visions. You want to draw them after you've played minions on the board. But what makes this deck so scary is how easy these tools are just to get a hold of, like Shadow Visions. Yeah. A, that's another difference, Yeah, yeah, I right? agree it was good. I agree it was good. I, yeah. But that's just an, back to the kind of race uh, discussion we had earlier. Shadow Visions is another thing, tool that the Highlander Priest cannot use to get to its win conditions. But this Priest can. Yes. Like, Shadow Visions literally escorts Deathsea right there with the, uh, with the Divine Spirit. And so for Mysterious, starting to run low on his removal options and with no Raza or Anduin, which is obviously what you want to be using as the vast majority of your removal in this matchup, are neither seen yet. So he's going to have to find some way of delaying what's coming down on the board while hopefully sticking a Lyra to generate those very necessary extra resources. Yeah, he's going to need him as well. If he was a little bit scared of a 4-7 being on the mm. board on turn 5, as soon as anything else comes on the board, he's going to say, uh, actually, I should probably start dealing with this because... If I was worried on turn five that you might have had the combo, it's going to get more likely the further we get into this game. Exactly. So a little bit of a weird turn for Deathsea because he doesn't really want to go off at the moment with his huge combos because he doesn't have anything that's worth while, to be honest. Uh, so just going with an Acolyte kind of for a tempo play. It sets up for a better target, I suppose, for Divine Spirit and Inner Fire, but this is very not especially. I like it, especially because there's the second Twilight Acolyte in the hand, so you don't mind just using the first one whenever a good opportunity comes. This is a good opportunity because the the operative has a high health total, a high potential health total, so that could still become a big minion through other measures. And uh, Twilight Acolyte mm. is more healthy immediately. It's a bigger minion. It's harder for Mysterious to clear. Again, it just goes around the game plan of keeping stuff on the board, yep. staying ahead, mm -hmm. combat whatever Mysterious is going to put on the board. I like it. It, it. It's weird because you think of like dragon fires and stuff like that and what's the best scenario, but I think what was presented to him in his hand, mm. I think it was probably the best option. And in your experience in this matchup, how important is Radiant Elemental to hold around for some kind of a big combo? It, against the Kazakas Priest, is it needed as a tempo it's, card at any point, or do you need so to save it? It's so important to okay. hold on to it. I think actually in most matchups it, with this deck, not against Aggro, obviously. We, we experienced how good it was against the Druid. Not quite good enough, but we experienced how good it was. But either for a cheap way of using all of the combo pieces, or for an activator for Lyra, Radiant Elemental is too important to just use up. There's two of them now. That's even better if Death Siege was Lyra. If you can get both of them down yeah. and play Lyra, I mean, that's a crazy turn all the time. If he draws Lyra, he can do the, do the stupid combo that everyone was talking about when they were first announced of infinite visions. Uh, with the Lyra double radiant to just fill his hand with priest cards. We're getting close to lethal here. We're actually already close to lethal. If Shadow Visions picks up Divine Spirit, Radiant Elemental, Twilight Acolyte, Powered Shield, Divine Spirit, Inner Fire. Oh, there's no Potion of Madness. Okay, we're one, yeah, we're yeah. one, one piece short. Yeah. Never mind. But that well, would have been point. close. That's, that's a very good point. That's 20 damage plus the, what, seven damage on the board? He's and almost there. This is kind of showing Mysterious uh, being risky in certain aspects because obviously throwing down any high health minion against this deck is very what scary. Is but also being very with. scared in other aspects by playing the potion immediately to deal with the Twilight Drakes. So do you think slightly inconsistent here? Should he have been a bit more afraid of that combo? What's going on here? Well. Oh, oh, he's just setting up, I guess. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that one. So you've, you've talked about this combo of Twilight Acolyte stealing their minion with Potion of Madness a lot so far this game. In my experience, it's one of the main win conditions for this deck. Okay. Against the Priest in particular, though, or just the deck in just, general? Just against the deck in general. I, 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 sorry, in this deck in, in general. Deck. Not necessarily just against Highlander Priest, okay. but if you're ever in the position where you can see it might be paying mm. off soon, I just think it's strange to <laughs> throw it away, you know? Yeah. Or, oh, like I said, he may be setting up for the next turn. I think I, I agree with you here. I think keeping one back as like a backup plan is good. I don't think the play onto the board was that impactful. And the fact it is now answered so comfortably by Mysterious here as well, it makes it look even less so. And now it's just a 2-3. It is, but it's going to be 
not healed up by Mysterious. So, okay, I think he... I was kind of no, afraid no, no. that he might not know about... Or he might not have thought of the combo in his oh. line of play. But it is actually still available. Okay, okay, hang on <laughs> a second. Dazzy could take the risk here, play Radiant Elemental, play Powerwood Shield, hope to draw Potion of Madness. It's still not lethal that, that unless... That would be lethal, though. Well, yeah. it would be if he draws Divine Spirit as well. Need That's two, very really. specific set of cards, though, yeah. Yeah. But then... It's a little bit optimistic, I think, still. Okay, okay. Because he would need both of the power shields to land on that thing. This is a good board regardless. This is setting up his own Radiant Elemental to maybe uh, pick up the damage before. But now that the card, ha now that the two attack Priest of the Feast has died, that combo for Death Seat is gone. Yep. So it is all in now on sticking yep. a high health minion. <laughs> That's not easy. It's not easy, but if but, you were to do it, Ysera yeah. is exactly the card against a priest to get it done. I believe the only answer to actually get it off the board uh, would be a Psychic Scream. Yep. Obviously, a Silence can be used to remove the effect, but Deathsy doesn't really care about that all too much. Deathsy's other tools, though, are getting slim. Like, he needed to... Does he even run Lyra? Have we seen Lyra once in Deathsy's hand? I'd be very surprised if he's not running Lyra. It, it's too strong to not run, you'd think, but, like... Uh, I don't know. Maybe he isn't. It could be a very anti-aggro version of the deck. Maybe. Lyra is just so good. Lyra is very good. I don't expect that to be cut from this list. But he just has to slam Ysera now and hope for the best, I think. Really? What is just leaving Lyra on the board? <sighs> How is he dealing with Lyra this time? I mean, he can deal with Lyra, but then he's throwing out Powered Shield and Inner Fire. Inner Fire isn't so terrible, because obviously there's, there's another one in your deck. He could even get another one with Visions if he needed to. Uh, and Lyra is... Very blooming scary. I, I do wow. The, the one reason why, uh, like, I, I agree we, with. I am completely behind this, but the one reason okay. I don't like it is we were saying how hard it is to remove Ysera. What's the one way of removing Ysera? Leaving Lyra on the board and allowing some crazy uh, stuff well, to happen. Well, that's the main way of all that. Ysera's yeah. yeah. like extreme that's just picked up off the top there from Deathsea. From Mysterious, sorry. Um, but you're right, like, the thing is, Lyra can give you an additional way of getting rid of or even stealing your Sarah. I'm not even certain that he'll go for it here. Maybe he will. It's, the he, Scream? So well, the problem is, if he plays Scream, he's giving Death an extra Lyra. I know, I know. <laughs> so you want to draw cards off the Scream. If he can just damage it, that's kind of a pseudo-similar effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is what makes me yeah, think maybe he'll go with this line of play, because... Uh, I don't know, there's still double uh, Circle of Healing, which can just heal it back straight up to full health. So this is looking very, very possibly like it will just be lethal available for death. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold up. <laughs> Hold on a second. Can Mysterious pick... No, that's never going to happen. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. See, this play from Mysterious is really good if there's no Circle of Healing. Mm -hmm. But at this point, it's been very slow play from Deathsy. Not pa it's been very, very weak turns. So he has to assume his hand is just full oh, of just rubbish. To find Divine, it. Yeah. Divine, Divine Spirit, Spirit is the only yeah. card. Yeah. And he's got Shadow Visions in his hand. And he's even got a Norse Cleric to draw a whole there bunch of is. cards. Divine Spirit, that is it going was, to end the game. That must have been almost 100%. Most cleric. spells have been used up now. Why are you playing Cleric? Okay, I guess why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah. It um, doesn't cost anything. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, he needs to make sure he doesn't... what. Hang on. Overdraw, there. fatigue himself? I'm trying to think about uh, what could possibly go wrong here. I don't think there's anything because he's obviously got every piece of the combo that is necessary. I, maybe oh, it wasn't quite enough damage. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was. I guess he just wants to do as much as possible. <laughs> just having fun with it. He's even doing it the wrong way around, the absolute mad lad. He's Deathsy. I mean, sending 51 damage to your opponent's face, I guess, is quite a statement going into game five. 52, 52. damage, mate. That. One for every week in the year. 2-2 two, two, then, game five. Loser goes home, winner moves on through into the loser bracket. What a nice game. little smirk from Deathsea as well. But you're right, it came down to the Acera. And uh, that was a very intelligent pick from the Death of Space Story. So, it was, it was a very, very good pick. I mean, it was that or Malagos or Scaled Nightmare. And Scaled Nightmare is definitely worth considering, but yeah. I like oh, yeah. the Ysera most of all. Was it just wrong for Mysterious to not go for Psychic Scream there? I think so. I think so, too. I think considering his earlier play where he used that Kasakas Potion where he was quite... I mean, okay, yes, he had very little else to do, but just get rid of that 4-7. You are scared of a 4-12. If you have been tracking cards and you know you haven't seen any Circle Healings yet, you know how possible that that can come to bite you in the bottom, yeah. and it has... 
but now we're going to game five. The only tricky thing was the fact that you're giving your opponent an extra Lyra, but that, that doesn't well, matter immediately. You can't, that's the thing. You can't care about that because the, yeah. because the chance, obviously, if you Psychic Scream lead their card back into their deck, uh, they are, they're just going to refill the board very likely, but your chances of finding Anduin or some other yeah, board right. clear on the next turn is higher uh, yep. than them just killing you on the following turn. I agree. So now we have Murloc Paladin against the Highlander Priest. Um, you fancy your chances as the Paladin here, is that right, Derek? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, far from super favoured for the Priest because of uh, Divine Favour can give you a whole bunch more cards. And even in the Murloc list, just being able to hit Gentle Megasaur, it can give you so much extra damage. <laughs> um, yeah, I think a lot of players have shown very positive stats in this matchup on ladder. But against this particular hand from Mysterious, that is going to be an incredibly tall order. I had a thought earlier, actually, and uh, I probably shouldn't say this. Okay. Yeah, I know. Probably shouldn't say this for the first time to you guys on stream. Should right. probably say it off stream first. But okay. Congratulations. This Are whole, you sure? This whole it's always wrong to draw patches thing. Right? Oh, okay. If you've got Divine Favor, uh -huh. it can be better to draw patches than to draw Salty Captain, right? No. No? Oh, well, oh, what, just because it's cheaper? Yeah. Oh, uh, to an extent. One less card in your hand, you draw one more through your deck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can. I just suppose in a way. <laughs> but even then, you can just you can just thin patches from your deck yeah, and just yeah. play the captain, just play divine favor later. Oh, yeah. We're not going to get into it's this still, conversation now. <laughs> it's when still it's better to draw deck hand. <laughs> completely and utterly so irrelevant to this conversation. It is worth noting as we go into game five that we need to remember that Mysterious was the runner-up uh, last I? season, and Deathsea was the first seed coming into the finals this season. So one of these players will be going out at top six, which actually, in the grand scheme of things, is quite mental. But out of all of the eight players that we have here. Anyone getting eliminated early on was a bit mental. Ball control getting eliminated early on was lumming mental. That was mental. Absolutely insane. <sighs> Almost as mental as Dan SWF's reaction to winning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was mental. Uh, and so now here for Deathsea, obviously hoping to trade the juggler as opposed to the uh, tide caller there. It's not actually presented to him. I'm not even sure if it's that much better to trade the juggler. I guess you just hoping to optimize damage with the four attack from the Tide Cooler, but if you were just attacked in, I don't know. Yeah, that was a tough one. I'm not even sure if I would necessarily trade there. You're kind of afraid of Powered Shield, Cabal Talon Priest, which are all a little bit scary, but in terms of the actual uh, abusing of the draw effect, there's very little that can come down. Uh, but on this turn, obviously, a complete clear available for Mysterious with the coin, the powered shield, and whatever other nonsense he wants to throw down, which is completely and utterly devastating to Deathsea's game plan. Yeah, without a call to arms, suddenly you are extremely far behind on the board. And that is the power of these clears that Highlander Priests do have. Yeah, that's a Pyromancer combo. Wow. Speak of the devil! Speak of the devil. That is exactly the single card that Deathsea needed to pull this back. But whether or not he goes for it now is kind of another question. He's still got patches in the deck, which sucks to pull out. There's still a Pyromancer on board as the main thing, which could very easily just decimate his entire Call to Arms to board. Should I? So if you're that scared of it, are you just mega soaring? Which feels uh, awful. Feels really bad. But it can test the 3-3 on board. Your opponent is forced to deal with it. Maybe they have to use the Pyromancer. Then maybe you can play a Call to Arms on a clear -er board. Yeah. I just don't know if this was right because the potential upside, like your opponent not having any cheat spells is not that unlikely, I would say. With the Powered Shield and the Binding Heal already used up, them having mid-side spells or minions, it's not a ridiculous assumption to make and it's just gone from bad to worse for Desi. There's still that Pyromancer on board. There's no potential upside to hit Megasaur on Murlocs. Well, Knife Juggler helps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think on this turn now, we're very much looking at Juggler, Deckhand, Hero Power. Because even if all the Juggles miss the Knife Juggler, the patches can just charge in. <laughs> the, the play is downstairs as well. We're. In this Should setup in the casting I... booth, we are just above all the players in their practice area, and we can hear them having an absolute jolly about every single draw being picked up. I love a good jolly me. Oh, this... Oh, man. You think this is better? I don't know. It hurts, because the knife juggler's sitting there, and all these minions are being summoned, and it, it just hurts. Everybody hurts sometimes. 
yeah, whether or not it was better on this turn, you're very invulnerable to any board clears at the moment. So I can see why he'd want to get it down on turn five as opposed to six for his opponent. Um, but the knife juggler extra effects just for damage would be very you strong indeed. But the thing is, at this point, it's all in on Detsy finding something impactful because he's just far and away losing on board. Specifically, the second call to arms right now with knife juggler. It's just been insane that Mysterious has had everything you could possibly want against Dakra. You had the Pyromancer, you had the spells, you've had the Potion of Madness, you have a Dragonfire Potion now. Yes, okay, you're running out of resources, but you have absolutely obliterated your opponent's resources as well. Their Divine Favor isn't going to matter if they play it, because you have no cards. So you're feeling fairly comfortable that the cards you draw are going to be more impactful. Yeah, I think that's the main thing to take away because very often as Kazakas Priest, you can't make that assumption because a lot of cards in the deck on their own are very, very weak. Uh, obviously, cards like Binding Heal, Spirit Lash maybe can't get the job done. Um, but there are a lot of cards that are obviously very impactful, like Psychic Scream, Dragonfire Potion, Anduin, Raza, even just Priest of the Feast, things like that, which could very easily swing this back 100% in Mysterious' favor. Well, <laughs> yeah. Just gets worse and worse for Deathsea. It's good because it gave him something to play where he didn't have to play the Dragonfire now. He can clear the board with everything as well. And then he has a backup. If there is another call to arms that comes out from Deathsea, he's like, okay, right, this Dragonfire can come out now. Yeah, a little sad now that he has changed his hero power uh, because the heal would have been pretty strong here, actually. Probably a fair bit stronger than a 1-1. One -one. Uh, and I think he should take the trade here as well. He just wants to make sure he's not vulnerable to anything at all, uh, be it Blessing of Kings, maybe a Bone Mare that's teched into the deck, Megasaur, all that kind of stuff. Just keep the board clear, and you should be in with a jolly good shot. Because we found ourselves in a similar situation to the last game of the day yesterday, where the Paladin is just all in on finding that call to arms. Because I believe pretty much every other card in this Murloc Paladin deck will not get the job done. Maybe a gentle Megasaur, if enough hero powers can stick onto the board. But surprisingly, these 1-1s one are actually doing... They're pretty impactful. Now, the, the longer these draws go on, the top decks go on, just having something that can combat the 1-1s one that Deathsea's putting on the board is actually quite nice. Yeah. So I think it's starting to look a little better for Deathsea here because obviously the one mana card here is probably the best one he could find in terms of one mana cards. Uh, just because it allows him to get an extra hero power. Now Megasaur is a pretty impactful draw, but there is just eternally that ace in the hole for Mysterious of Dragonfire Potion. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just more clear. So I was, I was about to say, you can pick up Psychic Scream, and that's going to allow you, if there was... I mean, this is the thing. You've already got the Dragonfire Potion. I don't even think you need the Psychic Scream as well. Oh. Uh, you don't, but it does protect you against the potential for spores here. Yeah. Uh, or Divine Shields. Even. Or Divine Shields, yeah. exactly. Because both of those, I mean, he'd probably go for Psychic Scream here anyway, uh, because of the fact that shuffling all these cards back into your opponent's deck is incredible. Yeah. Reduce you start... the chances of them getting called to arms, etc., yeah. etc. Exactly. Because uh, you just want to make sure that is as low down in the deck as you possibly can. And all of these options, plus three attack, is probably actually the best available. Just deal that damage while you've got the chance. Deathsea knows Mysterious yeah. doesn't have many ways, if any, of healing back up. Spirit Lash is gone. That's true. Hero Power's gone. Binding Heal's gone. So apart from Priest yeah. of the Feast, I think every form of healing has actually left the deck. And Anduin. Uh, and Anduin, yep. Good point for a little bit of arm again. Yep. Love this use of Scream here from Mysterious, because everything's going to die to Dragonfire Potion Enjoy anyway. Enjoy all of your one mana, one one. Ooh. Now that you're going to draw Deathsea. That's pretty good. That's kind of about the best he yeah. could expect. And yeah. something like this, because of that uh, attack buff he got on all his minions, maybe this can just bait out a Dragonfire Potion. But having said that, it's that is just assuming that Mysterious doesn't find Anduin. He doesn't find the other Psychic Scream. There's so many good draws he can get here. He hasn't been hitting them so far, though. And this isn't nice, but you might have to Dragonfire here. I mean, uh, OK, half is... Uh, a very strong word, but you could dragon fire, then follow up with a soul priest, and then you've got something on the board. I think he it's does have to dragon fire here. I don't think there's actually many like questions about that because there's okay. six damage on the board, yep. pressuring mysterious. He only has 12 health, and as we've established, he doesn't have a way of healing anymore. 
He can now, as you said, put the Arcanite Soul Priest down. It should contest with whatever deaths he draws. We know there are a lot of one mana one ones in Deathseed's deck now. And in terms of what you actually want to drag a fire potion, when it's just single draws from your opponent, that's pretty much as big as it gets. Because the only real threat I believe left in the deck, as opposed to Call to Arms, is obviously Sun Keeper Taran. There's another Psychic Scream. Would you like some more one mana one ones, Deathsea? <laughs> It's true, he still hasn't drawn one of them. I believe there are, what, five in his deck now? There's the first one. <laughs> oh, boy. At least and they make a cute sound when they play. This is the play for Deathsea. It's just to go for face damage, because obviously face damage is a lot stronger in Aggro Paladin, because some of them are running Valonir, and you usually run Leroy. <laughs> I mean, the zero mana hero power probably doesn't make any difference. I don't think it makes... Any different. He can summon a Murloc Tiny Fin every single turn now. For free. For free. Woo! As Murloc Tiny Fin is. Zero mana one once, who'd have thought? Yeah. Um, but it's just the 5 5 body that's the impactful consider. thing. Yes. Wow, Mysterious letting rip with the Psychic Scream now. Do you think it's worth it here in terms of diluting the deck for the potential of maybe not being able to Psychic Scream a Tarim? Hey. The main reason I don't like it is it meant that Mysterious wasn't able to develop anything that time. Yeah. Putting up the Raza would have perhaps felt a little bit better. I suppose the thing is, obviously this weak to, this play is weak to Tarim, but the other play was weak to Tarim as well, because just leaving stuff on board is inherently really, really good for Sun Keeper Tarim. And now Mysterious, finding a couple of minions yeah. two turns in a row, looks like, for the moment at least, he is going to be undeniably ahead on board. Play that, play on Mind Blast too for mana efficiency. Make the most of the Raza discount. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. This, this right. is the real ridiculousness of Psychic Scream yep. becoming apparent. Not, not the one we see very often, yeah. but being illustrated ready. very nicely here. Deadsea making the play uh, of going for exactly Sun Keeper Tarim and Gentle Megasaur, which I think I can respect as well. But yeah, still, still for Mysterious. Obviously hoping to find Velen or Anduin sometime soon to close out the game, but at the moment it's not even looking necessary because it's looking more and more like Deathsea is just going to be eliminated from the tournament because his Murloc Paladin cannot get the job done. Yeah, he's hoping that he can draw Tarim anytime soon. That's why he's keeping back the one ones, of course, so he can put them onto the board. But Mysterious is finding more damage. He has six from Mind Blast as well. And that's going to be that death seat concedes by taking his headphones off. Mysterious moves through to the next stage of the loser bracket. Unfortunately, Deathsea goes home, but he goes home in a top six position, which I think he should be very proud of, considering where he started at the start of the season. And what, what, what a game! Uh, going to another best of five, I think it's what it deserved, but it is our resident French man, as Frankie says, Mysterious, who is going to be the man who we get to see play again. I think that's exciting. I think it's so fitting for him.